I am Wes Houlihan and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We are here to do a draw reaction from Ireland's um, draw today in Dublin in the Exhibition Centre, or Convention Centre if you rather. Uh, joined by Rob Kavanagh, Ashton Dunbar from the UCD Waves. Um, how are we feeling? Are we optimistic? Uh, we obviously managed to avoid Group C, and, and it was quite. I don't know if you've watched the draw yeah. live, but uh, yeah. it was quite funny to hear the groans once we once we actually got drawn with them. And then, luckily, the computer came and saved the day, so we we actually end up because they were host nations, and so are we. That we actually luckily managed uh, to avoid them, much much to uh, Northern Ireland's um, despair. Sorry, that's but not really. But uh, no, like we, um, so our group is Switzerland, Georgia, Denmark, and Gibraltar. How are you feeling about that, Ashton? Yeah, very optimistic. I think we can take a lot of points off people, so I'm um, looking forward to it now. Yeah, you know? yourself, Rob. Yeah, it'd be the same. We'd be optimistic, though. We get a good run of form. Like I think it's handy that they have George and Gibraltar in the, the first two matches, so we can kind of get six points on the board. A bit of confidence. New manager, you know, sets it up nicely then for the rest of the campaign. Yeah, I've I seen that. Um, yeah, obviously, it's the two games are probably well, yeah, out of the whole group. They're just two easiest games that we could have started with. I think if we get in Mac McCarthy, you know, if he can get us playing and scoring goals, because obviously Martin O'Neill hasn't been doing that. Um, but if we, if we can get playing and scoring goals and if we can get a few goals going in then to the Georgia game with a bit of confidence... You know that would be massive as well. But I also noticed, uh, I think Richie Sadler said earlier that we actually don't have, I think, because we only have five teams in the group mm. that we don't play in June. So he was saying that the Mick McCarthy might actually get the lads in to do like some training and kind of get to know them a bit, which wouldn't be a bad shout if that was the case because, you know, he he, he won't get any time from now to match to do anything with them. Then we obviously play Gibraltar, which, on paper, we should. We should win. Yeah, yeah training uh, game, like, well, hopefully. They, 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 as far as I know, they do not right. They, they, I think they, they got their the first away victory doors. just in the Nations League in their last match. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, they actually scored a couple of goals. Like, huh? they've, they've, them groups are poor down in the Nations League that yeah. they're in. Yeah, yeah, you should realistically be treated yeah, and should, get absolutely. like four or five goals at least. Like, you know, yeah. you... It's kind of like when we're drawn against the likes of San Marino and the Faroe Islands, we're like, right. This should be three points, and if it's not, questions. Yeah, yes, questions exactly. Advanced, yeah. Yeah. yeah, from the players more so. But so, yeah, um, Georgia obviously proved very difficult. Um, we we drew one all with them, but th they were just for the whole game on top of us. I remember we, as far as I remember, had absolutely no possession whatsoever. It was just them. Uh, it was in Tbilisi. Yeah, yeah. They had and more shots than us in both games as well. I think that was the the game that really turned our, our, qualifi our World Cup qualification on its head. I think that was the game that essentially, you know, we obviously got beat by Serbia. And obviously then Denmark, and we'll get to them in a few minutes. But I think if we had won that game against Georgia, I think we would have we would have qualified for the World Cup, to be honest. Absolutely, yeah. 100%. Um, well, who is fearful of anyone? Like obviously Switzerland and Denmark are the two top teams. Switzerland have a few good players. The ones that spring to mind are um, Ricardo Rodriguez, um, who else? Jacket and Shakiri. Shakiri, yeah. Shakiri, yeah. Um, and uh, and Bolo as well. Oh, shall mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So they they have a good good few threats. More so, I think I think they have a better, you know. A, the better players. I think there's Denmark. a better balance about them than Denmark. Like, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, relying on one yeah. player with Christian Eriksen, then the drop off from him to their next player would be like quite big. With Switzerland, they have yeah. a few fellas all in and around the same level, playing at a decent level. Like, yeah. So they they be the favourites for the group anyway. I'd say. Yeah, but yeah, I think even I think even a lot of people were, were were like, oh well, you know, we could beat Switzerland. I'd be more wary of them than Denmark. I mean. Denmark are heavily reliant on Christian Eriksen. I mean, you kind of take him out of the team, they're a fairly average team. Yeah, like even mean, the match there the other week, I know it was, wasn't great to watch, but like once he came off the pitch, like I know they still had chances, but I think that was more so just the way Ireland played than, than Denmark playing well. It's just the way Ireland was anyone, so negative anyone, in defence, if you know, just invite, invites teams onto them. So, like, you know, eventually like it, they're going to crack and cough up a chance or two, you know. But if you know, play positively against them and they're missing Ericsson, like you'd fancy to get like three points, I'd say, or a draw at least away from home and three points at home. 
yeah i think yeah. i think as well though because the way you touched on you know they had chances so i think i think anyone in, in that kind of last two months could have beaten us northern ireland came here and should have beaten us three yeah, now it was at that match yeah. wasn't great yeah yeah so you mean yeah. if we if nick mccarthy can get the lads and look i think it speaks volumes about so many players that played with him speak so highly of him like everyone's coming out in the media speaking so, like very very well about him you know even duffer who has been quite negative vocally saying you know i think there's this one man to kind of get the best of him for now kind of you know it's just like for me it's it's like when a manager's struggling in the Premier League he gets sacked and they're trying to bring in someone just to kind of steady the ship yeah that's the way i seem to see the appointment he's reliable really. yeah and he's been there before he knows what he's doing like. yeah and, and he would know kind of in and around the camp and he's been in and around the championship and stuff like that with Ipswich and obviously the Premier League with Wolves and Sunderland and stuff like that. He knows the players. He'd ha- and I think he might be able to, you know, find a few gems that, you know, I don't think Martin O'Neill was kind of looking. The fact that he has Stephen Kenny, Robbie Keane and Terry Connor coming, coming in and helping him out and doing stuff as well will help because it seemed to be just kind of Keane and O'Neill and, and then everything else from underage was just all separate. And they didn't really have any kind of. I know O'Neill turned up at that under 17s championships in the summer. Yeah. You know, he's at that. But he never really seen much involvement with anything else with, with him, really. And I think now there's going to be a lot more focus on bringing through young players. There's young players there that are very good that could come through. And people are just kind of forgetting. But there's young Jordan Darty at, at um, Sheffield United. He's the under 23 captain. So it's like the reserve captain. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I, that guy Adam Oida and Norwich yeah, who's yeah. scoring goals yeah. exactly. Troy Parrott as well Troy Parrott yeah. Yeah. yeah and then there's that young flat at um, Brighton Leon, yeah. uh, Aaron, Aaron Connolly, Connolly the Galway guy yeah. yeah he's banging in goals Hoffenheim are sniffing around him at the moment so uh, Ryan Nolan at, at Inter is under 19 Leo Connor Man United Connor Masters and Cuevin Kelleher at Liverpool there's a so lot of good you know, Danny Crowley that's playing in the Dutch Premier Division yeah, at the yeah so I'd say they're there's definitely young players there that can step up. Oh, the Femi played against Man United yesterday, yeah. got an assist yeah, as well. Yeah. Started the last two games for Southampton. So there is definitely. positive science there. I still think that Shane Long can do a job up there with a player. I don't think he's going to score goals, but I think he can he could definitely you know cause problems for defences. He's still playing actively in the Premier League, although he's been injured at the moment. But I think we need to kind of realise that our team aren't as bad. And, you know, if you look at we we we've, we've two of the best right backs in the, in the Premier League yeah, in our squad bench. as well. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then you have you have Cyrus there who can play there as well. It's just unfortunate that that position is just Can full of good players. Yeah. The two players you would probably say are our best players are two right backs, and then maybe I don't know Robbie Brady or something other than that. Yeah, I I kind of struggle to see who'll be pushing them as 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 top players. Right you know? down Randolph as well. Yeah, but no one's gonna push him in goal. I don't think. Jeff no. Hendrick, like, the, like when he's on form, he's a good player. But just, <laughs> it's just this fall off for Ireland since the last Euros has been huge. Like he hasn't been anywhere near the kind of. Well, that's what I mean. That that's that's been, what I mean like, about kind of yeah. performing at high level. He does it for Bernie sometimes, but since Doherty's come into the Premier League, he's he's hit the ball. He's hit yeah. the ground running and hasn't stopped. You know, he's, he's looked very good. Yeah. yeah, so like, he he's making good good progress and. Obviously, Coleman has been putting in world class performances for Everton and goes and plays for Ireland and doesn't look half the player. So, it's something in the system there with Martin O'Neill because if Hendricks looking bad, Coleman's looking bad, even Doherty, when he played, he was made look bad because of the way we played. He wasn't able to get forward. Yeah. And, stuff like that. and he was playing Cyrus Christie in midfield to almost babysit Doherty. It, was sim- it sounds like he was the way he was kind of going about it. It's kind of. Sounded like he was almost, you know, as if he was the weak point. He made that out, which I didn't think was the case. But as far as, you know, if you were to make a prediction of where we finish in the group, where where would you think um, we, we could finish? I think definitely pushing for second, 100%. Um, and who would who'd be first? Switzerland. Oh, okay, so you think we could pick Denmark? Yeah, I think you could pick Denmark, yeah. Okay, what about yourself? Same, yeah, I'd say. Good evening, if lucky enough, say it would well with you. Good evening, I'd say challenge for top spot. No, get a draw away in Switzerland. Yeah. You know, I think it's going to be quite similar to the. But, to yeah, the I don't think it's going to be as yeah. The group was like favourable enough. Like I think, you know, as you say, a wave of optimism is too easy enough games to start off with. Yeah. You know, say you hit the ground running third match against Denmark. If there's the full of confidence, you have might have a few couple of new players. Who knows? You might have the, 
der Declan Rice. Declan Rice, ja, der, der <lacht> Maverick, <lacht> der the one the way child of Irish football, like you never know, like you know. But would you take him back? Yeah. If he came back with a with a with a statement explaining, I would. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the thing. Like I think people, you have to. He's the young fella's only nineteen. Like you know, like you know, like, think back to my world. All nineteen. Like you know, you you say one thing, then the next day you, you do the opposite. You know, like it's and he's playing in the Premiership. You know, it's yeah, he's a, a lot of responsibility and like a big decision to make from. What I don't like is that you know he got capped three times and then like he's like takes takes a step away to like decide who he wants to go yeah. for like that's what I don't like and the personally but if he came out and he said with a statement explaining maybe he had a fallen out with Martin O'Neill maybe he didn't get along with Martin O'Neill and Roy Keane that could be part of it as well you, you don't know but obviously he's, if he was to be in the squad he go straight in as one of our best players you know because yeah, he is a t- and I think top, like at nineteen like at the level that he's at. Is, yeah, I know. think he could be one. Um, I think he he could be one that could actually keep Ericsson quiet as well. I think it yeah, might true. be a good knock on effect. Like give someone like Jeff Hendrick a bit of a kick, you know. Well, you gotta remember in... James McCarthy's due back as well soon as well. Yeah, so he, true, he, he yeah. could be so back for match, and he's a top options. midfielder, you know. So imagine a midfield of say you know Royce and McCarthy and stuff like that, uh, and and Hendrick or Art or whoever you want. You know, it's a Premier well. League, mid, mid, Premier league, league midfielder. Yeah. I don't like him in midfield. Like I know, that. but like he can play. Oh yeah, of course. Point of number ten. Position. Yeah, I don't like him in that position. I rather him as a winger. I think he's more effective. Yeah, from I like the wing. him as a yeah, left winger. Yeah, I think now the fact that we actually have McCarthy, we won't see as many players being pushed in. They're like bat, pos- wrong position. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. McLean at left wing back, you had Robbie Brady at number ten. The players there like Callum O'Dowd and stuff like that can still make a difference too. So I'm optimistic about kind of the future. Um. If I was to come, I would say we'd be, we'd be pushing for second. But the group reminds me almost of like our last qualifying campaign. Which we had uh, Serbia and Austria, and then we had Georgia and Wales. I think that was actually almost harder, and we we done all right there. Yeah. You know, I, I, I suppose you could kind of say we had a lot more experienced players, and you know, your Walters, Wes Houlihan, um, your uh, John O'Shea's and stuff of this world. Uh, they're all gone now, obviously. Um, there's not that. Uh, I think Jonathan Walters is the kind of last of that kind of of that breed of, of player. I don't think he'll get back to you. Might even get back to being fit. Like then you rupture his Achilles or something, didn't you? Yeah, but he's, I know he's out for a while. But even still, I don't think he's gonna ever have the same effect as he previously had. Yeah, really I do. mean, if he's gonna use him as a target man for, uh, say, an Alba Femi or something like that, then yeah. But if I was to you know, our strikers right now don't really convince me that they're going to score goals. I'm looking around, Robinson, Maguire, O'Brien, Hogan, none of them fill me with confidence in terms of they're going to mm-hmm. score you a goal or, you know, they're, they're going to rise to the occasion. I'd love to see someone like Maguire retake really the ball by the horns, but he does seem to get injured a lot. His hamstrings seem to be just going all the time. Yeah. Obviously, Robinson done his hammer then and he's just had to come out of an operation today. It went well, but we, he might not be back till March or something now. So whether he questioned the if he's going to be fit so there's, there's those kind of doubts as well as the kind of there is pros and cons at the moment positives and negatives you know McCarthy to come back and so I think McCarthy would be a huge boost I think even i seen a video with Jeff Hendrick and Robbie Brady they were doing like a guess who thing with an, uh, on an FAI video and even Jeff Hendrick goes uh, uh, we really missed him the last couple of months and so like that. he was talking there was some clue as, as to who he was and straight away Brady just goes oh James McCarthy so it kind of it kind of goes to show, and I think when McCarthy's there, he kind of knows Seamus Coleman's game a lot better as well because they played together everything, yeah. and they're best mates in football. So I think as well as that, when Coleman does decide to bomb on forward, McCarthy's always kind of over covering his side if he needs to as well. So I think do think having players like that, and if he can come back and stay fit, but whether he has to leave everything or not, if he gets back in and starts playing first first team football, I think he'd be vital to us as well. Because he can, I mean, he, he's played. If you look at any of our big results over the last few years, he's played. He's played, mm-hmm. except for maybe Wales um, in Cardiff and McLean scored. But uh, as I said, look, on, on our day we can go to teams and beat them and get a result like that. And we weren't, we didn't look good that night at all in Cardiff. Do you know what I mean? But if we can go away like Austria as well and get these results, that would, like, because I, I, I would say Austria are better than Georgia. Absolutely, I definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, so I, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm confident enough that we'll challenge for top two. Um, if I was to predict a finish, I would say second, but I think it would be really, really, really tough ask as well. 
Yeah, well, it's the top three going. The third place team gets into the playoffs though, yeah. because they've expanded the tournament. So yeah, but I would. I don't. Ideally, though, you'd want to finish second yeah, yeah, and yeah, qualify automatically. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. What, well, that's mm-hmm. what I mean. If we're talking in an, in an ideal world, I mean, we should be finishing in the top three, but I think we should be aiming for top two, because. I'm sick of this whole plucky little Ireland. We don't have the players, crap. Because yeah, no, we, we do, yeah. You look at we Iceland and you look at other, like other teams. It's just, it's just an, it's a, it's a lazy. It's argument. a cop out. It's a cop. Out. Sure, you look yeah. at the North match. I was at that, and you're sitting there watching them, and you know the fella that plays up front for them, Liam Boyce. Like I remember watching a couple of seasons ago. He's at Cliftonville, then he went to Ross County, and I think he's in League One maybe at the minute. I'm not sure who he's playing yeah. for. And, like, are you trying to tell me he's a better player than, like, you know, someone like a Shane Long, like, you know, even, like, the lads of Preston, Callum Robinson, Sean McGuire. Of course, he's not looked at, like, the North team is made up of fellas in League One and mainly the Championship. And on paper, we have players playing at a higher standard. Like, you should do a lot better with what we have. And I think it's probably the failing of the management. Like, they just probably stopped getting the most out of them. And maybe the players just kind of got a bit... I think disillusioned yeah, I, with the regime because like you hear stories coming out when the players are saying oh, you're told an hour before kickoff what the team is in international football like times of the essence you know you need to be yeah. working on tactics or formation like as soon as you get the players in so they know well, exactly you know you're what they're 11 doing build on your shape mm-hmm. and stuff like yeah that. exactly it's not like you know club football where you know you're with the players week on week you know you know it's more if we have five days, so the fellas need to write. This is who's playing on Friday. We're going to work on tactics, work on set pieces. Should we watch Ireland? You could tell that the, some of them just didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. Like, and it was obvious, yeah. you know. And it was also obvious when Cyrus Christie was told, You're playing centre mid, and he was like, I've played there since I was like 14 or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, and to be thrown in that international level against Denmark. Yeah, it's a big ask. Yeah, do you know what I mean? You're going against. <laughs> You know, and they have a decent move because Iman Delaney for them as well, uh, Thomas Delaney, not John Delaney. Yeah. Um, it's is, a Dortmund now, isn't it? Dortmund, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's a very good player. They talk about him very highly too. And there's your man uh, Sisto as well, the winger. Yeah, he's, uh, he's quite good as well. Your man Poulsen up front, yeah. isn't back. And Dahlberg. Yeah. But they're like not great though. Like yeah. They're good, but like... Similar to our players, but we just don't have a world-class standout player. Yeah. Like, but I think if we did have the McCarthy's or Declan Royce's in that defensive midfield I think one of them could man mark Ericsson out of the game I do, I do believe McCarthy has the talent to do that and I do think Royce if he decides to declare which he's supposed to be the, he's supposed to be coming out this month at some point really? it's December now so uh, McCarthy said it in his press conference that he's supposed to be coming out soon and um, we'll have a decision made so it'll be interesting yeah. to kind of see it's going to be it's going to be an interesting new year I think it's exciting times I think I think a lot of the negativity has to stop and I think that it's about time people start getting behind the team. People can say, oh, it's Delaney out stuff and all like that. I, I think we just, whatever you believe in that, let's just get behind the team either way. You can protest or do whatever you like that in your own time. But in the meantime, when the players are playing, let's let's get behind them, let's back them, let's support them. Because it's a new area now. We A lot of people campaign for McCarthy. A lot of people campaign for Stephen Kane. We've got both. So whether you like it or not, they're there for the time being, and and that's just it. But um, oh, and uh, I need to mention that um, if any of you guys are on Reddit as well, go and check out the uh, or slash uh, League of Ireland because they're always at me to mention uh, these uh, their Reddit account on uh, on our video. So check it out because it's a good little forum if you if you're involved in any League of Ireland or Irish national stuff as well. So check that out. Uh, but yeah, I think I think it's been a good discussion. I don't I think we've kind of left anything out. I mean. So your prediction would be top two? Yeah, absolutely second. 100%. Second? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Say second. I'll be very push confident. for first, depending on, you know, what the rub of the green they get in the first couple I'll of matches. I'll be pushing it now first. You'll be happy with second. No, you never know. Like, you know, done, like, you know, didn't expect to get results against the likes of Serbia, who on paper are probably like like Switzerland standard. We got results against them. So. Like Switzerland hopped off Belgium only a few weeks ago. 5-2. So. Yeah, that's true. And they're lethal. But look at see how it goes. Yeah, but I we'll think the, we've 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 gone up against teams like Germany and Betham as well. One like, that. Yeah, like yeah, that's very so, true. Yeah. So we 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 when we turn up, we can't do it. I mean, a, a defense it's something that's solid enough. Yeah. It's yeah. just the fact that we don't score goals. If you're going up against teams, you need to score goals, and that's that's. Even with that, like, I think you can cast your net a bit wider for that. Like you know, you have players that are scoring goals, and all like on the League of Ireland, man. So like Tahu when you. 
Scorley yeah, 29 kind of, goals yeah, for Dundalk yeah. Killian Sheridan he was like I know he's playing in Poland but yeah, he's, he's scoring regularly in Poland and like that'd be a decent standard it'd be a higher standard than like you know what some of the like like players that are playing for other countries are playing and so like I think there are two fellas that she called them in for a training camp or for the Gibraltar game, see how they get on. Like, you've nothing to lose if you called them yeah, up on their. Yeah, they're well, not thought, thought, to you can just leave them out, and you know. Yeah, well, that might be a case with Mick McCarthy because now we don't know kind of what way he's going to operate. I'm kind of excited to kind of see, even if just his first squad, see who's in it, and and then his final squad just to kind of see. And then I'm kind of excited to see what type of. You know, I grew up in the Mick McCarthy era, he was the yeah, first yeah, manager yeah. For, for, for me, anyway. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited to see what he brings, and I think. You know, if he brings any anything like the old the old days back, I don't see how it's how it's not a good appointment. You know, but that only time will tell in regards to that. So yeah, I think we'll leave it there. Then um, first, I just want to say thanks for coming on, guys. And um, no we've hit the big four K now uh, as of today. So thanks to everyone who's subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so now. We've got some player interviews there that you might enjoy, as well as our own content. Uh, coming in and discussing these types of things. If you ever want to get involved and come in on the show, drop us a message. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a nice day. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button now. And if you never want to miss a video, click the bell for alerts. For all our other social media platforms, check out this list below. And as always, thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. And you know.